ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MDGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is Jess Guy Super Friends for Dominaria Standard. So we did Jun Super Friends yesterday, and today let's do Jess Guy and see what we can actually come up with. So let's jump right on into the list here with our, you know, first up, creatures. We only have seven creatures in the deck list here, which is three Baral, Chief of Compliance, and four Wrath Capetian Ships Mage. I don't know if that's the uh, actual correct way to pronounce. Is it Capetian? Capetian? Capiche, Capash, I don't know. Either way, <laughs> it's a good card for us uh, and a legendary creature. Uh, again, Peral is really good for us, helping us cast our instant sorcery spells a little bit cheaper, as well as being just a legendary creature as well for our other legendary sorceries we have in the actual main board here. A two mana one three, instant and sorcery spells cast one less to cast, and whenever a spell or ability you control counters a spell, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. So a really nice kind of card draw engine, as well as being just a nice blocker in the early game, uh, being a one three. Moving on, we have here, we have Wrath, a four mana three three flash flyer, that alone is pretty decent for us honestly uh, but you may cast historic spells as though they had flash which that is artifacts legendaries and sagas are historic that means Baral chief of compliance can be a flash one three that makes our instances and sorceries cheaper that's a really good interaction there just with the creatures by themselves uh, and thanks to the legendary sorcerers we have in the actual deck list here Baral with wrath makes some interactions ridiculous but that is it for creatures let's move on to our just guy super friends list here actual like planeswalkers we've got four Gideon three Chandra and two to fairies so like a nice little like you know going down like that uh, we have a th four getting here for some early game advantage as well as locking down some creatures a three minute three loyalty planeswalker plus one until your next turn prevent all damage target permanent with deal so that's gonna be an early game attacker for us that's gonna be a big bomb that they have on their side of the field uh, or just a land because we want to take up Gideon <laughs> if we go zero here for Gideon he actually becomes a four four indestructible creature uh, soldier creature token with indestructible and still a planeswalker prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn so he's getting in for four points of damage that's pretty good and another zero for us as you get an emblem with, of course, as long as you control a Gideon Planeswalker, you can't lose the game and your opponent can't win the game. So, pretty nice for us as well. We're not going to use that zero at all, but most of the time we're going to go plus one, probably prevent some damage from an attacker going in on us because our deck is a little slow in the early game here. We do have the 1-3 Baral on turn two to kind of hopefully kind of mitigate some damage. We also have some removal on our inner main board here, uh, but Gideon is really the card we want to get out as soon as possible uh, to try and prevent some damage as well as kind of tick up a Planeswalker and use him as an attacker in the mid to late game. Uh, moving up here, we have three Chandra, a four mana four loyalty, plus one exit the top part of your library. You may cast that card. If you don't, Chandra deals two damage to each opponent, uh, which is very, very good for us. And of course, plus one, add two red to your mana pool. Negative three deals four damage to a creature, and negative seven. This is basically the game ender here. You get an emblem with whenever you cast a spell, that emblem deals five damage to target creature or player. Um, so Chandra is going to be great for us in the uh, mid to late game for us. So being able to hopefully either get, to, get us some extra mana to cast some extra spells that turn, which is fine. Otherwise, we'll be uh, maybe plusing one and getting a card off the top of our deck before we cast anything else, just to make sure we actually get a good card, maybe. Uh, if we don't, it's just going to be like a land, just going to get exiled. Uh, negative three here is really great for us in the mid to late game, especially if our opponent has a very hard to deal with creature, like a, a Bronze Eye. This is something with a kind of awkward, like, like toughness ratings. There's also a lot of artifact creature decks kind of going around right now, and with Karn Sign of Urza being able to make, you know, like an, an immediate 4-4 artifact creature, um, or whatever, you know, size creature, uh, Charger's here to hopefully kind of deal with that as well. And of course, the ultimate can just end the game if you let it. Uh, last up here, we have Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, a 5-mana 4 loyalty Planeswalker, plus 1 draw a card, and then at the beginning of your instep, untap 2 lands. Very, very good if we were uh, in like game 2 against another control strategy. Negative 3, put target non-land permanent onto its owner's library, 3rd from the top, so basically removing a card for 2 turns, very nice for us as well, as well as putting them behind a turn, because they're drawing out the same card. And negative eight, you get an emblem when whenever you draw a card, exile target permanent and opponent control. So if Teferi actually gets to negative eight here, you just want to ultimate like crazy and then just immediately start winning the game as soon as you start drawing cards. Of course, the biggest problem here is that if opponent does have something with hexproof, uh, Teferi's emblem actually can't target it like a uh, Carnage Tyrant or that, you know, new Lich Mastery, that kind of stuff. Uh, but regardless, the plus one for Teferi is very good at getting us some card advantage. The negative three is very good at being able to hopefully deal with either a token or an opponent's creature that we do not like in the battlefield or maybe even another Teferi on their side of the field. We want to make sure Teferi is kind of being like crowd control a little bit. Uh, well, not crowd control, particular spot control uh, while we build up our Gideon or build up our Chandra. Our goal here is to basically control their board state until we either get in with Gideon enough points or emblem with Chandra. Moving on here to our spells here, we have three Syncopate, three Harness Lightning, three Jai's Emulating Inferno, which is an amazing card we'll get into, four Glimmer of Genius, and two Settle the Wreckage. Uh, Syncopate is just a great counter spell for us, a 
X and blue instant. Uh, and if we have Barology, if it complies on the battlefield, it actually gives us one extra. So if we just play one blue, this is basically, you know, one, and they have to counter for one at least, or pay for one. Counter target spell, unless this controller plays X. If this spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. So very good against any kind of uh, Embalm, Eternalized, very good against a Scarab God, a Scrap Heap Scrounger, anything where our opponent is going to have a way to get back to it uh, from the graveyard. Syncopate is going to be there to exile it completely. Next up for us, we have Harness Lightning here to deal with some kind of early game crowd control. A two mana instant, uh, choose target creature, you get a three energy, then you may pay any amount of energy. Harness Lightning deals that much damage to that creature. Because this is a three color list here, uh, we have Aether Hub in the actual land base, so we do need a way to get some energy back into our actual like situation there, as well as having Glimmer of Genius in the board as well. So if we actually have a lot of energy on the battlefield, Harness Lightning can basically shoot down a five toughness or even six toughness creature, no problem. So very, very good for us. Giant's Emulating Inferno is here, and whew, this is a great card for us to use. Basically a board wipe, um, an X and two red legendary sorcery. And of course, the only problem here with this card is that you have to cast this, or when you cast this, you have to have a legendary on the battlefield. So that's a creature or planeswalker. But Giant's Inferno deals X damage to up to three targets, which means three targets could be a creature, planeswalker, or your opponent's face. Um, this is such a great card. I've used it so many times in testing, as well as whenever we, I ran it on stream yesterday. This card is ridiculous. Love this card. It's gonna be used, especially because we have Wrath in the actual deck list, it's gonna be used basically as an as an instant as well. So just very, very good overall. And of course, Glimmer of Genius is here for us to draw some cards. Four mana instant. You know, scry two, draw two, you get two energy. Very simple, very straightforward. I'm gonna draw you stuff and uh, hopefully give you some stuff to kind of push your deck into the mid to late game in a strong situation. And lastly, because there are quite a few aggro decks in the format, we have two Settled Wreckage, a four mana instant. You know, exile all attacking creatures and opponent controls. Uh, that player may search his or her library for that many basic land cards, put those cards on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle his or her library. Second of the is basically the best removal spell right now. Um, it's kind of hard not to like, you know, um, telegraph that you do have a set of the wreckage in your hand, uh, but if you have Baral on the battlefield, uh, you can only need three mana for this card because it is an instant, uh, which means that uh, your opponent may be kind of caught off a little bit by that. Uh, either way, set of the wreckage is one of the best removal cards in the actual deck list here for us. Uh, let's move on here to enchantments and of course, legendary artifact. Oath of Teferi here, um, interesting card, a little slow, but totally worth worth it if you get it to go off. A 5 mana legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, exile another target permanent you control, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step, and you may activate loyalty abilities of planeswalkers you control twice each turn rather than once. So the blink ability here isn't really that useful to us. I mean, it's really great if we have like a low like uh, loyalty points, like a Chandra or something like that, we can blink them and bring them back. So that's really the only kind of upside there. The other upside, of course, is we get to activate loyalty abilities twice, which is really good. So draw two cards with the Teferi, untap four lands super super fun for us of course uh, doing the same thing getting four mana from Chandra just a lot of fun stuff like that um, Art of Kieran is also here to kind of go along with Oath of Teferi as a great way to kind of use those loyalty abilities those extra loyalty counters we get uh, and be aggressive with it a two mana four four uh, legendary artifact vehicle with flying and vigilance crew for three or you may remove a loyalty counter from a planeswalk you control uh, rather than pay Heart of Kieran's crew cost so this is very interesting for us it gives us kind of a good way to kind of crew and hopefully get in some damage early game or in the mid to late game if we just have a Chandra out, have Oath of Teferi out, maybe, plus twice, use one of those counters and swing in for four, or maybe even block for four. Either way, both of these cards interact with each other very, very well, and I do think the curve for these are actually kind of fun too. And it is always fun to like throw your opponent off if you play red, then white, and then a Heart of Kieran, because they'll think you're Rotor Vehicles, and then you play, you know, like Baral and Raph, and they're like, what are you playing? And then you just win. That's that's how this deck works. But that is it for all the cards in the main board besides lands. Let's go over lands really quickly here. We have a bunch of different lands in the deck list here, kind of had a different layout here. Uh, two uh, plains, three mountain, two island, uh, then four clifftop retreat, which is a buddy land forest having for uh, white or red. And then we have three glacial fortress, four sulfur falls, three irrigated farmlands. Probably should be a fourth irrigated farmlands because that card is useful against all of the other dual lands we have in the deck here. And four aether hub because we do need mana as soon as we possibly can in our correct colors. Gideon and uh, Chandra make it a little difficult because of the double colors there, as well as the giant emulating inferno. Either way, that is 25 land in the actual deck list, so a little bit higher than normal, but I do think that you do need enough of that uh, to make sure you hit your land every single turn and that you can kind of build up your board set as quickly as possible. But that is it for game one gameplay. Let's go for game two gameplay with the sideboard and 
uh, let's see what happens. Uh, going onto the sideboard here, we have two Authority of the Consoles, two Magma Spray, two Abrade, two Negate, two Disallow, or three Disallow, sorry, two Lyra Dawnbringer, and two Urza's Ruinous Path. So, very good card uh, for us as well. Uh, Authority is here basically to slow down our, our creatures, or slow down our opponent's creatures, gain some life. If our opponent is playing like a token based strategy, like there's a lot going around right now, that's that. Um, Authority here is going to come in in game two, slow them down, gain us some life, and make sure that we actually have like an extra turn or two to make sure we can, like, you know, either board wipe them with uh, stuff like uh, Jai's Emulating Inferno, or just go wider and hopefully board into either uh, Urza's Ruinous Blast or kind of, you know, draw into a Settle the Wreckage. Next up here we have uh, Magma Spray. Magma Spray is going to be here for us for a uh, Scrap Heap Scrounger, anything with an Embalm Eternalize, slowing those kind of strategies down. Again, those are going to be aggro strategies as well. Uh, and, you know, we can actually use this to kill something as well if we get a trade with either a Heart of Kirin or something like that. Uh, if it would die, it gets exiled instead. That's very, very good as well. So, uh, next up here is Swore Braid. There are a ton of artifacts in the format right now. Godfrey's Gift is still strong as ever, uh, and a Braid's going to come in to hopefully deal with that. As well as maybe a Karn like artifact. If they go negative two with Karn, they have a 4 4 or 5 5 artifact. We're going to bring in a Braid and deal with that. Next up, we have two Negate here. If Syncopate's not going to cut it, Negate's going to come in to go over that, and it's going to hopefully just shut down either a control strategy or a another Planeswalker strategy. Just like with Disallow here, the best thing part about Disallow too though, it actually like counters an activated ability or trigger ability, meaning if they plus with a Planeswalker, or negative with a Planeswalker, or emblem with a Planeswalker, if they emblem with a Planeswalker, you're in for a treat. It gets to counter that, and they actually lose their Planeswalker if they, they emblem with uh, losing their Planeswalker there, so Disallow's very good for that. Lyra Dawnbringer here is coming in probably over a Heart of Kirin if we can't get a Heart of Kirin crew. Um, very good attacker for us, a 5-5 First Strike Flying Life Linker. Very good. It does have the other Rangers you control, get plus and plus one and have Life Link. That's not that important to us at all, uh, but if we do have Wrath on the Battlefield, this is a 5-5 Flying First Strike Lifelink with Flash, basically, um, and that's ridiculous as well. And lastly, in here, we have Urza's Ruinous Blast, a 5-mana Legendary Sorcery. Again, we have to have Legendary on the Battlefield for this to work, uh, but exile all non-land permanents that aren't Legendary. Um, very good card if you're up against an opponent that's playing like a more aggro strategy or more mid-range strategy where they're not playing a lot of Legendaries or any kind of Planeswalkers at all. Urza's Ruinous Blast is going to deal with that really, really well, um, and if they're playing like a token-based strategy, Strategy. This card is just a total board wipe uh, for us, as well as keeping our own creatures on the battlefield at all times. If you'll notice, every single card in our actual deck list here that's a creature, planeswalker, or even the artifact Heart of Kirin are all legendary, which means that Urza's Ruinous Blast doesn't affect us at all. It's just a board wipe for five that completely board wipes our opponent, so very, very good. But that is the full deck list, guys. Let's go on to the full layout here. On MPGO Traders, this is coming to about 257 tickets, and if you want to build this in paper, it's coming to about 407. So again, another big pricey list for us uh, for uh, Just Guy Super Friends. This is probably the last pricey list I'm going to be doing on the channel. I'll be doing the more budget lists next week, but I did want to get Jeskai Super Friends out because this deck is so much fun and a ton of fun to kind of tool around with. And Jai's Emulating Inferno, such an amazing card in this deck list. That is going to do it for the video today, guys. Like the video if you like it. Comment down below on a deck you want me to cover in the future for sure. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I do want to give out a special shout out to Josh Fansickle. Um, whenever we were Twitch streaming yesterday, he kind of gave us a list uh, of his own list of what we did. And we actually ran that list on the Twitch stream. You can check that out. Then we did some like brewing around it, kind of, you know, taking some cards out, adding some cards in, uh, making sure that the actual deck runs a little bit better. And then, uh, you know, kind of came to a little bit something close to this list. And then I did some more testing and kind of came to this final list on this video here. But that's going to do it for this video today, guys. I really hope you like it. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.